Hi everyone, welcome back to the 4x4 Fab Shop. And today we're going to rebuild a trigger brake that we had built for one of our channels. We ran into a few issues. I think we can make it a much better tool, make it more diverse, and allow us some uh, future capabilities. And in the process, we identify a few things we need to put in the shop. Alright, so let's jump in. But you can see what happens as we're bending. What we're bending just hit the finger. So we need to build a finger with more clearance in it. And as part of that, we're going to put new pins on this so it can get more height. Well, I built it with all these screws so that eventually I can build some more fingers for this. And that way if I want to use a segmented finger to bend around things, I can. It comes apart pretty easy. And I'm just going to use a countersink, a one inch countersink to go down in these holes and just mark the location. Now that's just going to give me a rough location because we're going to clear it from the back. Alright, so we plasma cut the end. I gotta drill a use a hole saw and still cut that out. Thought it'd be easier than trying to hole saw this whole top off. But it definitely made a case to buy a porta band. This would have been a whole lot easier with the porta band. Alright, so I'm gonna set it up now. I'm gonna hole saw that slug out so that the pins can pass through. And this end of it'll be done. it's off we got a through hole in there so now I can cut the main pins off we'll make a longer set we'll put our bending fingers in here get this located and I'll tack these back in place and we'll have a much longer pin which will allow me to make any length finger in here that I need Okay, so all the old pins are ground off. I got a lot of cleanup to do first. Get it set up on the bench and uh, show you how I figure out where the pins need to be. I got some quarter inch thick parallels and some quarter inch end mills and burring bits. Alright, so what we did is we put the quarter inch bits in the front of it and the quarter inch parallels in the back of it and that's allowing the, the finger itself to sit in the lower shoe and that'll center it. And that way we know we're in the right spot. That way we can get a measurement for the new pins we're going to put in here because the new pins are going to extend out and that's going to allow us a lot more travel so as we make new fingers for various things we can have whatever length we need. So the material is just ERW tubing. All right, so we'll put the pins in. What we'll do is we'll tack them and then make sure it still moves good. One thing to keep in mind with this, when it's being bent, the die is going to want to naturally 
center up between the lower shoe and the finger itself. So we're not going to hold this so precise that it's like a leader pin and bushing. It, these are just merely guide pins. Okay, it moves fairly good. Once you got it in the center, just pushing. All right, so we've got the original finger out of this. We're going to cut the material for the new the new fingers to go in here. So we got a couple pieces of hot roll that will go in here. We got a piece of a uh, cold roll to go in here. We get it cut and then we'll get it all assembled in here and then tack it in place and pull it out and mold it. Alright, so we're just going to take this and put it up in the upper half because it's this new finger is going to be made up of three pieces and then when we're all done I'm going to cut it in segments all right, so I'm going to use my shims like we had before remember whatever you shim on the back side make sure you shim on the front side otherwise it's going to be offset and I think I'd like to have about a two inch gap and once again this this is all kind of just eyeball work now I'm going to lube these pins just a little bit. Just make sure you don't spray this on the surfaces you're going to weld. Because that will surely make a big mess. Alright, so we found a piece of half by one. What we'll do is I'll hold it in here and we'll tack it. Take this die out of here. All right, so you can see a little difference in the profile. The main purpose is to, so that if I'm bending something small, it can actually fold up inside of here. Well, this one just doesn't have as much. Now I'm going to make short welds on both sides. So I'm not welding everything one side, have it pull. I'll weld a little bit on this side. And I'll flip it over and I'll weld a little bit on this side. I really don't want a whole lot on this side, but I'm going to have to put something in there. so we got the finger all welded I think it came out pretty good so we got a little mixture of MIG and TIG on this because I wanted to try to conserve how much weld was actually in this area here so now we're just going to slice it up into a few smaller segments and then leave a larger piece for something later all right so we'll get it cut up get this thing assembled and do some bends Okay, well, let's go inch and let's go inch and a half. So if I want to run just a single segment, I'll stack that up under one of these screws so it'll set aside for now. That way if I have to, if we want to build, bend something custom, I can cut fingers to different lengths out of this bar. I've got a one and a one and a half ready to go. Let's try a different spring setup.
Here we go. Okay, it just fits under the finger. Now we didn't measure the angles. Obviously we're well past 90 here and I'm, in, I'm at 90 there. So for what we're looking for, it worked well. And if I decrease this a little bit more, it'll only work better. We came just short of the upper half of this finger. So that all worked out pretty good. So that was modifying our Harbor Freight Arbor Press finger die. So I can make tighter bends and we can make segments. So now if we need to, we can we could actually fold up and stick that smaller finger up in there. And we could it's a little more diverse now. So it was a lot of work. Most of the work for that project on the original bill was in the upper half of that die. And it was the same for this way as well. So if you want to see the original build, I'll see in this link over here. And as always, I'll leave some links down in this other corner for welders. This has been the 4x4 Fab Shop. Please remember to subscribe for our new channel. We very much appreciate it. And if you got ideas or comments, please leave them in the comments below. Always looking to communicate, interact with the people who like the channel. So until then, see you in the next project. This is the 4x4 Fab Shop.